Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Wax Mode channel. In today's video, I have Bead Maker from PNS. This is their spray sealant. I'm going to put this up against Chemical Guys V7 in the short term, give you guys a baseline water statistic result. Also give it a soap down with uh, Car Pro Reset. And in general, I'll just share my thoughts of what I think about Bead Maker and how I prefer to use it and answer the question for myself of whether or not I really think it's worth the hype. But for me, you know, right off the bat, I can tell you guys, I like Bead Maker a lot. I think it's a great value for the price. This is $12 for a 16 ounce size bottle that you can get on Amazon right now. But Bead Maker is a very, it's a super slick, very easy to work with product that is a basically a gloss enhancing maintenance spray topper. But in reality, you know, we have a lot of products out on the market that fill this category. And Chemical Guys V7 is one of those products. So that's why I have it being compared against Bead Maker side by side on the panel right here. So I have Bead Maker on the right half of the paint. I've got V7 on the left half. The paint was prepped using Sonax's Perfect Finish. That's their finishing polish followed up with Clean Strips Prep All, which is my panel wipe. And both products were applied 24 hours ago to give any sort of the polymers and the formulas the time that they need to cure to the surface. And Bead Maker does note a minimum eight hour cure period before you see maximum performance out of the product on the bottle. But jumping into the rinse test here, what you guys are going to notice right away is neither of these products are very aggressive water beading products. And it's funny when you take an account in Bead Maker's name, you know, you, you sort of get this expectation that the product is going to behave a lot more aggressively than it shows, which is not the case. You're not going to get any sort of the beading that you would get out of Brilliant Shine Detail or Car Pro Reload, Gion Cure. You're still definitely going to get some beading. Um, it's just not going to be as aggressive because the surface is not, it's not a high level of hydrophobicity like it is with those other products. So if you guys are looking for a product that performs by itself at a high hydrophobic level, Bead Maker is not going to be that product that's going to do that. That's why I like using it as a topper. So if I have a coating on the paint already that's going to give me this insane hydrophobicity, I can use Bead Maker on top of the coating and maintain its performance without killing its hydrophobicity so this is where i use bead maker the most this is where i found it has excelled the most as a designated coating topper for many of the coatings that i've worked with um, the c quartz coatings the geon coatings i have the black fire coating on there as well bead maker has been an absolute fantastic coating topper that has not destroyed any of the crazy hydrophobic behaviors and in some cases like with the case of the classic c quartz coating it is slightly improved the hydrophobicity on the surface all right so i've washed the paint using car pro reset this is going to showcase to us how each product behaves once we have applied surfactants to the surface but some of the differences that i'm noticing between v7 and bead maker is bead maker is a little bit slicker feeling than v7 both of these are at the top of the game uh, out of the spray products but bead maker does hold that slight edge However, there have been some products as a base where I've applied V7 and Bead Maker on top, you know, on a side-by-side -side section together, where V7 has greatly outslicked Bead Maker. It's just, it's going to depend on the base that you're working with. So if you've got, for example, Polymer Net Shield and Fuso Coat, these were two products where I found that V7 was definitely slicker feeling once I applied both of them on top. But you can see in the rinse test here, the V7 side is definitely more impacted by the surfactants in the soap out of reset, so it's taking longer for the water to sheet off the left side compared to the bead maker side. In terms of gloss levels, out of the gloss meter, both products were giving me comparable results. Um, a lot of guys were drawn into Chemical Guys V7 based on how it made the paint look as opposed to its durability, so a lot of guys like that out of V7. You're going to get the same, very similar levels of gloss and, and improvement and appearance out of bead maker as you will with V7. So when guys ask me, you know, what, what should I use prior to a car show? You know, what, what kind of products would I recommend to really try and bring out that gloss? Um, the gloss meter is going to tell me a different result than how the paint's going to actually look when you look at it visually with your eyes. You know, you, you see more of depth and wetness and those sorts of factors instead of just purely the gloss measurements. So the gloss meter tells me how shiny the paint is, not necessarily how good the product makes the paint look. So I would say if gloss enhancement or appearance enhancement is your main focus, I would have no problems recommended either V7 or Bead Maker for that task. And the reason that you would go with Bead Maker is because Bead Maker is $12 a bottle instead of $17 or $18 a bottle with V7. Okay, in this clip here, I've got Seacourts UK 3.0 applied to the front driver's door. On the rear driver's door, I have 
the classic version of C-Quartz. This is the titanium dioxide version. This is also one week after applying both coatings to the paint. Reload has not been applied on top of these. This is just the bare coatings themselves. So this is their maximum performance that they'll showcase by themselves in terms of hydrophobicity. And what I'm going to do is compare this water behavior, this level of sheeting, with the nine months of durability after I've applied Beadmaker on top of both sections. So with the classic C-Quartz here on the back door, this is not as hydrophobic as C-Quartz UK 3.0. However, after I started topping this with Beadmaker, I immediately saw an improvement in hydrophobicity that exceeded this level of water sheeting at one week. So we we're at six months. The first time I applied Beadmaker to the paint, it was already sheeting better than what we're seeing now. And it also greatly bridged the gap between the performance of C-Quartz UK 3.0 compared to the classic C-Quartz. So when we think about the idea of topping a more hydrophobic surface with a less hydrophobic product, the general tendency is for the surface to overall reduce its hydrophobic performance. With coatings though, it can be a little bit different. So we've got a situation here where Beadmaker is a less hydrophobic product. I'm putting it on a very hydrophobic surface and I'm being able to maintain that hydrophobic level or even slightly improve it. This is what I call true product synergy. When two products are working together to actually boost the overall hydrophobic levels of the surface beyond of what they're capable of by themselves. All right, in this clip here, this is nine months after applying both coatings to the paint. On the left half of the front door panel here, what I've done is I've left that bare, so I haven't applied any bead maker to it. On the right half, I applied bead maker one week ago. And you can see the sheeting rate is still very comparable between each side, which is surprising for the left side because we have not applied any toppers on top of it for the entire nine month section. Now, classic C quartz side, this is the biggest surprise to me. You can see the sheeting rate is extremely clean. It's extremely fast and I can notice that it is faster compared to its very fresh performance at one week. And it looks like the UK side is still just barely outperforming the classic C quartz side after being topped with bead maker. This rinse is one year after each coating has been applied to the paint. On the left half of the front door here, I applied Turtle Wax Ice Seal and Shine for the first time last week. Um, on the right half, I've been maintaining this section on a regular basis with Beadmaker for about three months now. And I definitely notice a slight drop in hydrophobic performance on the Seal and Shine side compared to the Beadmaker side. Um, classic C-Quartz on this door here has been performing absolutely incredible with, uh, with it being maintained with Beadmaker for about six months now. But you can see here, if your goal is to maintain the, the most hydrophobic performance out of your coating, you know, the toppers that you use to maintain your coating definitely matter. Some are going to be better than others in doing that, that task. But absolutely, guys, I've been very impressed with Beadmaker's performance, specifically as a coating topper. Um, maintaining gloss, improving the slickness of the coatings, because, you know, the C-Quartz coatings are not slick products. And after sitting on the surface with no sort of toppers for six and nine months, you're really gonna, gonna feel how rough the surface feels, even though the hydrophobic performance is really there. Beadmaker's gonna do a really good job in bringing out that, that slickness into the paint. And this is DPC Armor applied three weeks ago. And this really highlights to me why I like coating so much. It's, they're very convincing in showing their visible performance and visible durability compared to many waxes and sealants. In this clip here, this is going to highlight how Beadmaker performs on top of Zymol Glazer, which has been applied to the right half of the hood. On the left half, I just have Beadmaker by itself. And then on the far right section, right where the crease is, I've just got Glazer by itself with no Beadmaker on top. And you can see how hydrophobic Glazer is by itself. It's an incredibly hydrophobic wax. And where I've applied Beadmaker on top, it's definitely taken a very noticeable hit in hydrophobicity. And what I'm noticing here is your base matters. If you have a hydrophobic wax underneath, that's gonna be able to boost the hydrophobic performance that we would ever see out of Beadmaker if we just use Beadmaker by itself. But unlike the coatings, Beadmaker on top of Glazer is not gonna produce, it's not gonna be able to maintain Glazer's original hydrophobicity. So you need to take this into account when you're trying to define your goals of what you want out of your maintenance topper. If my goal is to maintain Zymal Glazer's original hydrophobicity, then I need to select a much more hydrophobic topper, a much more hydrophobic standalone topper by itself compared to Beadmaker. Now that being said, if my goal is just to maintain gloss and slickness while adding on a little bit of a little form of protection in between my maintenance washes, Beadmaker is going to be absolutely perfect for that. 
and just uh, just apply it either wet or dry after every single one of your maintenance washes and you guys are going to be very happy you can use it wet as a drying aid you can use it fully dry which is what i prefer to do and a lot of guys say that you have to dump a lot of bead maker on the on the surface for your first initial application I haven't found this to be the case. I don't see any sort of performance improvement if I over apply bead maker on, on the first application. On a hood of this size, I would spray four to six sprays of bead maker and then work it into the paint, get coverage, and then you should be good to go. But as far as the hype goes, guys, this is a very inexpensive spray sealant at $12 for 16 fluid ounces. One of the slickest paint sealants on the market that I've tested. Easy on off application and it's been a phenomenal coating topper for me. Thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video review. If you guys have any questions or comments or product recommendations that you want to see me test, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video.